Hello YouTubers. Today's video is not so much about hay farming. It's more like tool time. And if you're in the hay farming hobby or business, or if you like restoring cars and stuff, which I happen to as well, we all use an air compressor and we all suffer from the blight of water in our lines. So today I'm going to make a video. I don't know why I keep touching my nose like itches. Today I'm gonna to make a video of a cooler. It's actually a transmission oil cooler that I'm going to put in line with the line that goes from the pump of the air compressor to the tank. So that cooler is going to go in between there. What's gonna happen is that is going to dramatically cool the air as it comes out of the pump. It's gonna run through the transmission cooler it's going to come out of that into a water trap and then it's going to go back into the tank. So the idea is the air coming out of the cooler is significantly cooler than the air going in. That is going to allow the water to condense. The condensed water will be trapped and then you have dry, cool air going into the tank. So I have purchased everything from the great evil Amazon. Let's take a look at what I got. Hopefully this video makes it a little easier for some of you out there who wanna do this. So the first thing is the cooler itself. This is a derail uh, tube and fin cooler core. This unit is, let's see, what's the model on it? It is a, it's a 15300. Highly recommend this one because it is made in the USA above all, but there are a couple other advantages to this one that others don't have. It's actually got 16 rows of cooling tubes instead of eight or six or four that others online have. So this is a really good unit. It costs about $65, so not too terribly expensive either. So the line on my compressor that goes from the pump to the tank is this 3 8 inch outside diameter. All tubing is going to be sized based on its OD and it looks like it was aluminum and it used compression fittings. So I am maintaining that size and compression fittings so it'll work with what is already set up on my pump head and the tank. The cooler has 8AN fittings. So what I've done was I took an 8AN um, with a, it's a female 8AN to a 3 8 uh, NPT male. I did not find any of these in female. And so then I got a 3 8 NPT female to female adapter. So I could hook on a 3 8 OD to 3 8 NPT male. And then I end up with something like this. This was a compression fitting. And this is what the total setup looks like. And then this would just screw right on to there. So next, I have this pneumatic air. These are Korean made. They look like a pretty decent deal. I got one of those that's going to go in line. And then I have this aluminum tubing. It's actually fuel line tubing, but it's supposed to be rated for very high pressure. And then I bought a, a cheap tubing bender that actually looks um, pretty darn good quality actually. And that was this uh, Wastor, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's clearly the best that China has to offer, but it does look to be pretty nicely made. I had one of those little junky pliers that Harbor Freight makes to bend tubing. All I find that crap does is it just put kinks in it. And I, um, I don't know, I think I threw it around the shop a bunch because I was angry. So this is my setup. What I'm going to do now is start getting this cut and bent and get all this together. 
And before I go on, I will say that this is actually pretty economical to do. All of this stuff here, uh, the total price of everything, excluding the two bender, the total price of everything was about $165. And I got all of this stuff from Amazon, these, these, everything, literally even the, even the tubing bender, literally everything came from Amazon. So I'm going to uh, get busy sealing these fittings and getting them all put together and, and fabbing it up. And then we'll take a look at what I end up with. Here I got the setup all ready to go. I got the um, eight end to three eighths inch NPT adapters on there with the female adapter so I can run two males together. And then I got my compression fittings. So that's ready to go. I'm just going to connect that to the outside of the fan cage for the compressor pump. And then I got my compression fittings on this. So now I'm going to scoot the air compressor out and start to do all my bending and hooking up. What I've done now is I took the cover off, uh, I took the belt cover off the air compressor and then I zip tied uh, the cooler to it. I think if I were to do it again, I would actually buy the dedicated ties that are meant to be used for this because this was quite a pain to get these on here. A set of those ties was only six bucks, but I was just trying to be cheap. Sometimes it doesn't pay to be cheap. Now on to mount this. Well, I'm mounting the filter and what I had to do here was a little tricky. So first of all, I had this uh, bracket on the filter and as you can see, the filter has um, a directional movement of air through it. And this bracket was on this side of the filter originally because this is the front of the filter here. But that would have meant I would have had to take my line from there and run it all the way over and come in that way. And so what I did was I took the filter out of this bracket, flipped the filter around so the front of the filter is facing this, which isn't really a big deal because really the only thing that that matters is that there's a little button here I just need to be able to pull that down to pull the filter off. And I can still see that easily from the front. See, I can see it right there. So I got that flipped around. Then I took a piece of angle iron <clears throat> and because I was lazy, I just welded it right to the frame there. And then I got a little fancy and I tapped some quarter inch 20 holes um, or threads in this angle iron and then threaded these uh, one quarter inch 20 machine screws right into there. And now I will be able to run my line straight from there and make a straight shot right into there. And then from here, I'll be able to come up and just curve it down into right there, my tank. So let's continue on with that. Everything's hooked up. And I've got this main pipe here running in a nice little loop to the input of my cooler. And the cooler comes out down there, curves around, goes to the inside of my water trap. And then the water trap comes out the other side. Again, observing the flow. Water trap comes out the other side and goes down into the tank. I guess I needed six compression fittings for this project and I was short one, so I still need to get a compression fitting on there. So I just, I fired this up. I just held this down on there. I fired this up and within 30 seconds of running, this pipe gets so hot to the touch that I can't actually touch it. 30, 30 to 60 seconds of running. It's so hot here, if I touch it, uh, it actually burned my hand. This pipe coming out is room temperature. It actually feels cool to the touch. So I would guess this pipe is probably 120 degrees. 
This pipe feels like it's probably 60 degrees, maybe, yeah, probably 60 degrees. There is a ton of water that is coming out in this water trap as it runs. Uh, this is an auto draining filter. So once the pump shuts off and the pressure relieves in this line, uh, this should drain out. And so I shouldn't have to worry about it filling up. So overall, I think this is going to help me out tremendously. It was relatively inexpensive at $165. It looks nice and professional on there. And it's going to give me much drier air. Hopefully this was useful. I will put all of the materials I used in the comments below. Thanks for watching.